Thanks for coming on to my talk um, about array channels. This is a library for distributed computing in Julia. Um, essentially, it takes the default behavior for the distributed library in the standard library and causes all communication events, that is, message passing, to occur in place. Um, so it's a performance optimization for distributed. Um, what is distributed parallelism? Um, I hope you got to see Matt Bauman's talk just yesterday um, about how to use distributed in Julia. Essentially, um, we, in distributed parallelism, we're able to divide our computation effort not just between many cores of the same node, but actually between many, many nodes. So it actually can give us very high scalability. Um, but the problem is, because there's no shared disk or um, memory, very often you need explicit communication, very often over a network too. Um, this is called message passing, and although it sounds like data transfer only, it can also be used for synchronization. And in fact, um, I will show you how we can use that. Um, how do we write normal distributed code in Julia? Well, we have two, cons two constructs, essentially. Um, remote call for distributing work and data between our workers, but also futures for synchronizing and waiting for that um, computation to, uh, to occur remotely. Um, this is a standard um, way to write um, code involving communication between workers. So from the master process, we will establish remote channels. Um, these are just global references to channels which sit at a certain worker process. Um, from here, we can delegate um, work to each of our workers. Um, I'm just getting the workers to send each other their IDs. So um, process two will anticipate a message from its channel, which process three will provide here. And um, the reverse happens on the next line. Yeah, so that's a synchronous put and take to remote channels. Um, and how does this work in Julia? Well, we, we employ some sort of eager communication model. Essentially, um, Julia will wish to send its message data as quickly as possible, even prior to synchronization. Um, one caveat of this is that if there was an existing buffer which previously contained message data, um, that buffer will not be reused. Um, a temporary buffer is created instead, as soon as the sender is willing to send its message. Um, on synchronization occurring here, um, the buffer reference is moved from the previous existing buffer to the new buffer. Um, and as we say, this requires a different buffer at each communication event. Um, this does, however, lead to reduced access locality or cache locality. Um, this is one, just one notion of the effectiveness of processor cache in our computational effort. Um, in particular, we're gonna focus on temporal locality, that is to do with time. Um, essentially, this is uh, when, uh, how, f how frequently, how close together in time do the, does the same um, uh, memory location get accessed where necessary, where necessary um, to proceed in the program? Um, essentially, quick um, accesses in quick succession, as opposed to um, large time delays between these accesses, mean that um, necessary program data can remain in cache for longer. And so all operations occur in cache instead of in main memory. Um, in array channels, we hope to mitigate this problem using in-place communication. Es essentially, um, to do this initially, we, we elect for a rendezvous communication model. Um, that is, a handshake is performed, and only once sender and receiver have both agreed to transfer data does the transfer occur. The transfer occurs with no interruption, however, and uh, data is immediately deposited in the output buffer. So the same buffer can be retained for Im improved temporal locality. What is array channels? Well, it's a tool for writing data parallel codes that is parallelism operating over large distributed data banks. Um, and it's aware of the effects of temporal locality. Um, just this small modification of using in-place communication um, has quite significant performance ramifications. So on a ping pong benchmark, that is two 
vectors being repeatedly sent between worker processes, um, we actually see 150% um, higher um, data throughput. Um, looking at the Intel parallel research kernels for assessing the suitability of runtime environments for parallelism, we, we actually see that two of their data parallelism kernels, Stencil and Reduce, yield 71 and 68% improved performance with array channels over distributed. How do we use array channels? Well, essentially it provides us with building blocks for creating our parallel codes. Um, first of all, we can import it using everywhere, um, using array channels, that is, cause all workers to import the library. And we create an array channel. Now an array channel is sort of an archetype for um, a type of communication which you would like to occur in your code. Um, so this is for buffers which are gonna contain double precision floats um, of dimension 64 by 28. And workers two, three, four, and five are gonna participate in this array channel. That is, they are going to pre-allocate a buffer of the correct dimensions and type for this communication. Um, we have a, a basic form of communication, a point-to-point -point, um, form. So we also use put and take as that is the idiom which we're using with remote channels. Um, put allows you to um, specify a source and destination buffer. The source sits on the sender's process, on the sender's um, memory, and the destination sits on the recipient's memory. Um, you can choose who to send to, and likewise, the receiver must reciprocate. Um, both actions are blocking, and um, neither process will proceed until um, the put and takes uh, have, the, the data has been transferred and the handshake has been acknowledged. Um, here's how we construct a code with array channels. So again, from the master process, we set up and we forward declare the sort of communication events which we'd like to occur. So um, here I create um, a buffer for each worker. Um, uh, in fact, two buffers for each worker, an in buffer and an out buffer. Um, we do some setup for our code, including um, taking the underlying buffer so we can perform fast array manipulation on it. Um, and later on, we do our kernel. So under 100 iterations, we're going to send the contents of um, one process's out buffer into another in buffer. Um, we're going to repeatedly perform this send receive type um, operation. To do two blocking operations simultaneously in Julia, we encapsulate them with tasks. Essentially, both processes are going to send and receive large arrays and sum the transpose of these arrays in. So that's representative of a sort of kernel which we would like to perform with array channels. Um, yes, we also support reduction, um, much like reduce in MPI. Um, we have a native Julia way of facilitating this using modifications to the serialization library. Um, this targets a tree topology. Um, and here's a basic reduce code. And soon we'll have scatter gather. Um, these are useful for embarrassingly parallel operations. Um, the, for instance, it's a model of, it's a, an equivalent of PMAP, which exists in Julia, but with in place communication. Um, thank you so much for attending my talk. Does anyone have any questions? No. Please. Yeah, I, I wonder about path pathological examples where um, you may not wish to create too many, like, uh, so, so, so buffers for use in communication, um, I contemplate whether to make them global, um, that is accessible to all communi communication events, um, or, or to create buffers on demand for communication events. But, it, but essentially, if I, if I want to continue using rendezvous, then I need to duplicate the buffers somehow. I, Right, that, that's, oh, oh, yeah, right, so, so sorry, rather than async immediate, 
So uh, um, immediate immediate send is is possible using using tasks in Julia. So you can wrap a put event in in a task, and then you can wait on that task. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I assumed something else. Yep. Any other questions? Yeah. Thanks so much for listening. Yeah. Thank you.